So guys, I am back with yet another First Descendant video, and today guys, we go over update 1.0.5. This thing is absolutely massive. Let's get into it. How's it going guys? My name is DPJ, and I have to take part in my weekly Ultimate Descendant giveaway. It's as simple as this. Drop a like on this video, leave a comment down below, and make sure you are subbed. The more I see you active on my first Descendant videos, the more of a chance you have of winning. I will pick and announce winners at the end of the week, so good luck. Also guys, join my Discord link down below for even more first Descendant giveaways. Okay, so the update of 1.0.5, the patch notes for this have not long been dropped. Absolutely massive guys, I mean, to a point where it's probably going to take me about 20 minutes to run through these because there's so many changes, but I'll try and do my best to get them out to you guys as quick as possible possible so let's get into the patch notes and it starts with uh new descendant ultimate valby added ultimate valby which we all knew was coming looking absolutely incredible let's not lie to ourselves ultimate valby modification modules spiral tidal wave the bouncy bubble bullet has been replaced by a projectile that fires in a straight line Spiral Tidal Wave is stackable and can be fired three times in a row. Wow! And attracts impurities during their gluttony intercept battle. Pretty cool. Hydro Pressure Bomb. Instead of plop plop, she leaps forward and deals damage to enemies around their landing area. The more enemies in their laundry state, the more powerful the damage. Crazy people. Okay, added Ultimate Valby Amorphous Materials. Amorphous material patterns 1144, 115, 30, 55, 113, 23, and 52. We also have 73, 87, 110, and 125. These can no longer be acquired. You can continue though to use the amorphous materials you already have as before. Added the AA variants of amorphous materials, the ones I just mentioned, guys. That's 1144, 115, 30, 55, 113. 23, 52, 73, 87, 110, and 125. You can acquire the Enhanced Cell Blueprint, Stabilizer Blueprint, Spiral Catalyst Blueprint, and Code of Ultimate Bunny from them. Ultimate Valby's Blueprint and Code Materials will replace one of the items available from the original Amorphous. The Amorphous Materials of the AA variant can be acquired and used in the same place as the originals. Pretty cool. Okay, so new descendant. Evoluna. Okay, so Luna's skills. Her passive skill. Improvisation. Using any skill increases inspiration gauge, which allows Luna to use enhanced skills. Active skill 1. Stage presence. Using the skill changes Luna's weapon to her unique weapon. Performing the notes in time to the music by using her skills or hitting monster stacks and increases her skill power modifier. This sounds so cool, I cannot wait to use her. Active skill 2. Passionate stage. Her using the skill makes Luna play upbeat music, increasing the skill power and modifier of Luna and her allies. Gaining the enhanced effect increases the skill power modifier even more and also increases the skill critical hit rate and damage of allies. Okay, so active skill 3. Relaxing act. Using the skill makes Luna play relaxing music. Hitting the enemy with a note grants an effect that instantly recovers the MP of Luna and her allies. Gaining the enhanced effect increases MP recovery and reduces skill cost. And then we have active skill 4. Delightful stage. Using this skill makes Luna play delightful music. Hitting an enemy with a note increases inspiration gauge and decreases the skill cooldown of allies. Gaining the enhanced effect increases the inspiration gauge even more and immediately resets the cooldown of allies. Madness. Okay, so Luna modification modules. Nimble footsteps. This modification module enhances Luna's movement speed and amplifies the effect range of her performance, making it easier to support her allies. Noise Surge transforms all of Luna's skills to combat skills. Performing the notes in rhythm unleashes a powerful AoE attack. When the inspiration gauge is full, summons a moving stage where she dances to recover MP and shield. Incredible people. Added Luna Amorphous Materials. Amorphous Material Patterns 17, 38, 81, 20, 98, 68, 15, 49, 71, 27, 19, 94 can no longer be acquired. We can continue to use these. 
as like the other ones we mentioned earlier with Ultimate and Valby. And again, guys, added the AA variants of these same amorphous materials. And it also says you can acquire the Enhanced Style Blueprint, Stabilizer Blueprint, Spiral Catalyst Blueprint, and Cord of Luna from them. Luna's Blueprint and Cord materials will replace one of the items available from the original Amorphous. The Amorphous materials of the AA variant can be acquired and used in the same place as the originals. Okay, so we're going to move on and they've added a new void, a hard void intercept battle called Gluttony. So, intercept Gluttony to collect the Hungry Sonic external components. Uh, this is a set and the blueprint of the Ultimate Weapon Peacemaker. Pretty cool. Okay, so the Gluttony external components there. Hungry Sonic set is a two-piece set that grants toxin resistance. The four-piece set grants an effect that recovers MP on hitting the target with a skills unique weapon, as well as an effect that increases skill duration and MP heal modifier proportionally to max MP. Badass. New ultimate equipment, the Peacemaker. Added new ultimate weapon Peacemaker using a dimension skill grants a single reload of peace effect. At maximum stacks, the single reload for peace. Uh, this effect grants you or enables you to fire the loaded ammo in a single quick burst when taking an aimed shot. And we see a little image of it on the screen. Looks so it looks bizarre. It really does. Okay, so a new module. RK Concretion. I think that says that. Concretion, I'm not even sure. Decreases movement speed, firearm attack, and all attribute attack except the non-attribute attack every time a skill is used. But each stack of RK Concretion increases defense and MP. Okay, so added new products. Added new Descendant Exclusive Lunar Bundle, which includes a Lunar and a Pool Party Skin. Added Lunar to the list of standard Descenders in the shop. Added premium Ultimate Valby bundle, which includes Ultimate Valby and the Vermilion Wave skin and Ultimate Valby bundle. Added Valby's summer theme, Viesta summer theme, and male summer theme. Added Luna's Albion Academy Cadet, Luna's classic maid uniform, Luna's panda, and Luna's dinosaur limited skins. Added Luna's augmented reality of madness premium skin package. Added Luna's exclusive white mask premium head skin. Added Luna's exclusive hair and makeup 1 and 2. Added Luna's the ultimate high feeling and volume up standard skins. And added Luna's makeup of Sly. Added adjustment control axis times 30. And final adjustment control times 20. I believe that is. these are support items. Okay, so hotfix 1.0.5. These are content improvements. Now we're going to check out UI, which you're seeing on screen now. I there's only a couple of things here I really need to mention. I don't think we need to go through the entire thing, but some of these are quite a decent addition to the game. So one thing here I've, I've just been begging out for, and that is added a feature to collect all at the lost and found items in the mailbox. I mean, this was so annoying going through these one by one. Now we can just pull them all out all together. That's incredible. We also see guys that after checking the map now, we've acquired information in the library. Closing the map now leaves the library open. This is incredible too. There's also added a camera shake on and off feature. Pretty badass. You can also now check key state information in the weapon reactor and external components inventories. They've also increased the speed of scrolling when you're on the maps menu. I mean, this is great too. It's so slow sometimes trying to go from top to bottom. There's also a few other great quality of life changes too, like they've added a leave party button to the social menu uh, to make it basically easier for us to find. I mean, I could never find this. I didn't even know it existed, but yes, that's a great addition too. They've also added a search function in the consumables menu. This is great too. And a few other changes, which are, like I said, you're seeing on the screen now. So we're going to move on to descendants and modules. Increase the poison and contagion range of Rainer's Room Zero Trauma from a 4 meter radius to a 7 meter radius. Increase the maximum scaling range of Valby's skills from 200 to 250%. Increase the maximum scaling range of Blaze skills from 200 to 250% too. Change the blizzard generated by VS's Glacial Cloud module to be triggered instantly without delay. Change Valby's Albion Academy Cadet head skin to be valuable. Change incoming final damage to incoming damage modifier in the description of the safe recovery module. 
Okay, so now onto equipment added a feature in in-game options that enables some single shot and burst weapons to fire automatically when the fire button is pressed and held down. This is in incredible the burst fire weapons the tactical weapons in my opinion i can't bear using them because i'm so used to just holding down that trigger with various other games having this option available in the game settings a lot like destiny will basically make any single shot or any pulse rifle fully automatic this is a change i'm so glad to actually see added into the game because it's going to allow a whole new host of arsenal for me to use and not be mad about it pretty cool Okay, so increased Enduring Legacy's official crit damage from a 1.7 times to a 2.3 times, increased Secret Garden's critical hit rate from a 35 to a 50%, and critical hit damage from a 1.8 times to a 2.25 times. Increased Nazar, I can't even pronounce that, Nazar, Devotion's critical hit rate from a 36% to a 45%, and critical hit damage from a 2 times to a 2.25 times. Decrease the trigger rate of bombardment of Greg's reverse fate, uh, but now it also triggers when the weapon is fired at unshielded enemies. So there's some great changes here, I'm not gonna lie. Equipment can now be dismantled at once without no quantity limit. Pretty cool. Okay, so on to field. Increase the amount of void shards that can be acquired from special operations by about seven times. We also see on screen now the director's comment if you do want to pause it and go through it. Okay, so reduce the distance you're knocked down when hit by a trap. Load the ratio at which you're named monsters immune to sphere HP scale or scales with the number of players in the infiltration operations and reduce the duration of immunity. The Agna Desert Vespers Echo Swamp Night White Gulch Hagias and Fortress Fields now have a 100% chance to spawn encrypted vaults at spawn. This is a great addition it really is i've got so many code analyzers and code breakers to use i know exactly where i'm going to go increase the hitbox size in data collection missions to make it easier to collect data amazing <laughs> outside environmental sounds are now less audible in the indoor areas in kingston cool adjusted the distance that monsters spawn in the laboratory to be closer as 15 meters miscellaneous balance sound levels for shield destruction notification material result window etc okay so on to optimization improvements and we're seeing a few here guys i don't really think i need to run through these i mean if you do want to pause the video and read them you can be my guest that's completely up to you but seeing them on screen now we will however check out the bug fixes in regards to descendants fix an issue where lepic could trigger the overkill skill at 0 MP when equipping the increased efficiency module, fix an issue where Eugene could not target an ally when using the solidary healing uh, if part of their body was covered by an object, fix an issue where Dan but not our allies rescued by Eugene could not use any skills for a short period of time after the rescue, fix an issue where switching weapons after using VSS thrust road skill causes the skills visual effect to remain. Fix an issue where the knockdown range of Valby's plop plop skill was a larger than the actual skill range. Wow, that's probably going to affect a few farms. <laughs> Fix an issue where the Enzo shoot support was not applied to allies. Fix an issue where using the ultimate glaze massacre or life siphon skill did not increase her damage when she is above 50 HP. Fix an issue where glaze life siphon skill and her modification modules massive sanctification and explosive life could be used on objects in intercept battles. Fix an issue where Kyle's repulsion dash could be used on objects in intercept battles. Fix an issue where the skill animation of Kyle's repulsion dash skill would intermittently be cancelled. Fix an issue where the power of Ultimate Bunny's lightning mission was determined by the amount of electricity she had at the time of use. Unlike Bunny, the power of Bunny's lightning mission depends on the amount of electricity she currently has. Fix an issue where Bunny's maximum power skill, Sound Pitch, went up infinitely and sounded like a noise. I mean, what else is it going to sound like if it don't sound like a noise? <laughs> Fix an issue where Seymour would become uncontrollable while using the RK Explosion skill. Fix an issue where after Ultimate Viesa used Thrush Road with the Absolute Zero module or Valby used a Laundry Bomb, Ajax placing a barrier on top of it inflicted reflective damage on Ultimate Viesa or Valby. 
I actually saw a few videos on this. Uh, equipment fixing issue where moving on a field with three or four pieces of an external component set prevented the two piece set from being applied. Fixing issue where the damage of hitting the ultimate weapon King's Guard Lance after it was deployed was recorded in the statistics. Fixed an issue where the ultimate weapon executor's hip fire accuracy was lower than what it should be. Fixed an issue where the ultimate weapon Thunder Cage unique effect would deal more than 1.33 times damage when monsters were clustered. Instead, Electric Shockwave now deals 2 times damage regardless of the number of enemies so that is real cool indeed and again guys on the screen now you're seeing the director's comment where he talks about the thunder cage so yes if you want to pause the video and read through that be my guest moving on fixing issue where you could hear one or two extra shots when firing single shots with a repeating firearm okay so now on to modules fixing issue where the firearm critical hit rate increase effect was missing in the description of valve support moisture module Fix an issue where Valby's Tidal Wave module would not properly stack finishing attack when piercing an enemy. Fix an issue where equipping Ajax's body enhancement module would have different final result values depending on what was saved. Fix an issue where if the Matrix Recomputation module was equipped by Ajax, the shield would recover every time after a very short while and the shield started a 50% after equipment. Fixing issue where the Pitmaster passive would remain indefinitely when Blair removed the classic Chef module while Flame Zone was in effect. Fixing issue where the knockback effect would not trigger when Blair used Deadly Cuisine while equipped with the Backdraft module. Fixing issue where the name of the Sharp Precision Shot module's buff was incorrectly shown as a lethal finish. Fixing issue where Bunny's evolving skin quest requirements were not counted when Bunny equipped a modification module. Fixed an issue where Bunny unequipping the electric condense module left a status effect display that did not have any effect. Fixed an issue where Galay's Predator Instinct module skill displayed the frenzied state icon and named twice when used. Fixed an issue where Ultimate Galay's demonic modification module sometimes did not deal damage when used. Okay so now on to field. Fixed an issue where defeating named monsters at the same time as Void Fusion Reactor Mission was being deleted allowed the player to use uh, reconstruction devices without consuming Void Shards. Fixed an issue where the zone map of Haggis the Old Mystery showed different paths from the actual path. Okay, so fixed an issue where the traps would remain on restart after dying in the No Resurrection Zone in Haggis the Haven. Fix an issue where movement markers would appear while progressing through the void fusion reactor. And fix an issue where Roman monsters would not spawn on the White Knight Gulch Hatchery Battlefield. Also changing Morpheus material patterns and shape stabilizers acquired from hard infiltration operations in the White Knight Gulch and Haggis. And you're seeing these on screen now. Pretty cool. Miscellaneous guys, which you're seeing on screen now. Nothing massively important here, guys. But if you do want to pause the video and read through them, you can. There's also uh, the director's additional comment too. Again, this one though does reveal a little bit of information in regards to drop rate. So they state greetings. This is the first descendant director. We're going to call him Minciok Jones. That's it. I'm not even sure. I apologize. Uh, today, I'm going to outline the dev team's plan for issues that are discussed frequently by the community. The team is currently working on season one and season two updates while also responding to improvement issues discovered during the live service. Today, I'm going to talk more about how we plan to improve the current state of the first descendant rather than the season one and season two updates drop rate improvement plans while all of the drop rate systems are operating fairly in the first descendant we do understand that some players are struggling with the uh, vagaries of drop rate to address this we're planning to introduce a guaranteed drop system where you're guaranteed to get the item you want after repeating the activity a certain number of times this is incredible i'm not gonna lie the first ascent has various missions and amorphous materials with chance dependent rewards. We are considering how we can effectively implement the guaranteed drop in such diverse reward systems and we're working to create a farming structure that players will be happy with. We hope to make improvements before long to provide a more rational and satisfying farming experience. Incredible people. 
He then does go on to talk about disposing of leftover items and a few other things like support, build, diversity. Again, if you want to pause the video and read through these, you can you can be my guest. And finally, guys, he talks about balancing. Finally, some news about balancing. We are seeing a dominance of the skill damage focus builds of some descendants. Descendants and weapons that are well suited for these builds are quite popular now. We want the meta builds to change from season to season. We want the descendants and weapons that are effective in new content to be different from those in previous seasons. Also, we're looking to increase the proportion of firearm based combat in the end game. We can't promise that all descendants and weapons will be equally balanced at all times, but our goal is to keep changing the effective builds. To that end, we promise to make constant adjustments and offer different ways to play with new content. We aim to implement the improvements I talked about today during season 1 and 2. Pretty cool guys, and basically that is the end of these patch notes. Some incredible changes, I'm not gonna lie to ya. I mean, what we just lastly covered there in regards to guaranteed drops, I cannot wait for, and then buffing and probably nerfing descendants in the future to change the meta going into new seasons. This is going to be crucial for the game going forward. They need to do this right, they really do. But there we have it, guys. That is the end of the 1.0.5 patch notes absolutely massive i thought the video was going to go on for 20 plus minutes and it has i apologize about that but i want to showcase you absolutely everything guys if you enjoyed the video leaving a like really helps out if you like what you see and want to see more be sure to subscribe and hopefully guys i will see you on that next one